But something that's been on my heart for a while is uh, about the, uh, God rebuilding and asking us to rebuild our altar of intimacy. And uh, so that's what I'm going to share about today. So we, are, we have entered into the Hebraic year 5780, and that is a decade of the mouth. It's pay. Now, in the Gregor we follow the Gregorian calendar, but, you know, in, in, in A.D. 20, 325, Constantine shifted everything because he, he saw the power of God on the Hebrew people, and he didn't want them following the one true God, and he shifted things. You can, look, you can Google this information. And so the enemy always counterfeits everything. So he has the astrology. When we know that we don't read, right? We don't read astrology because we know that that's not of God. But now the Hebrew, he gives us guidelines monthly. And even every decade, he gives us guidelines. So that's what um, the, the, this decade that we've entered into is 5780. It's a decade of the mouth. And so a lot of us have big mouths, right? <laughs> But the Lord is saying, I want you to speak my word, and I want you to know the authority and power that we all have within us. And, and so we're going to talk a lot about that today. So the scripture that the Lord uh, really wanted me to start off with, I have it in two different versions. And it's in Isaiah 43, 19, and the, well, 18 and 19, and the Amplified. And this is what it says. Do not remember the former things or ponder the things of the past. Listen carefully, for I'm about to do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even put a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. All right, I, I got to take this band-aid off my finger. I can't turn the pages here. So um, God is saying to us, don't, listen, don't focus on what's been. Because a lot of what's happened in our lives is what's caused us to be on kind of shut down a little bit because, you know, it's been a rough season for a lot of us. And so, uh, you know, in Isaiah 43, in the, the Passion, it says, stop dwelling on your past. Don't even remember these former things. I'm doing something brand new, something unheard of. Even now it sprouts and grows and matures. Don't you perceive it? He said, I will make a way in the wilderness and I will open up flowing streams in the desert. And we need the spirit of the Lord to do that because when you have circumstances and issues in your life where there's been wounds and, you know, hurts and stuff, well, you know, God is saying, listen, I want you to cut the, 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 the cords, cut the ties to what's held you back. What, what good is it doing you anyhow, right? So he's saying, choose to forgive, choose to let things go. Don't dwell on what's behind you. And he said, I want you to do a new thing. And so in this time, in this season of the mouth, you know, I said, Lord, show me things that, you know, the Bible says out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. What's coming out of your mouth? You know, what's coming out of your mouth? What are you saying? What are you saying about situations? There's so many things that we can be negative about. You know, I, our governor, I can say a lot about him, not nice things. And so the Lord said to me, well, are you praying for him? I'm like, no, I don't like him. And he said to me, pray for him. He said he needs help. I'm like, oh, my God, what is this man doing? So prayer changes things, right? Our complaining does nothing but give way for the enemy. He says prayer changes things, amen? So one of the things that God is asking us to do is, uh, and I'm going to take us, we're going to go to 1 Kings 18 is to repair the altar, our altars. And that what I'm talking about is our heart issues. Repair the altars on our heart. And we can go to 1 Kings 18. And let's see, which scripture did I start with? Okay, let's start with 17. Oh, there we go. Good boy. All right. It says here, when Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, are you the one who is bringing disaster on Israel? In another version, it says, are you the troubler of Israel? We have that ability in us. We have the spirit of God in us that can trouble what the enemy's plans are. And it says, Elisha said, I have not brought disaster on Israel, but you and your father's household have. And by abandoning and rejecting the commandments of the Lord and by following Baal. Sounds like America. Now then, send word and gather to me all Israel, all of Israel at Mount Carmel, to, together with 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of the goddess Asherah, who will eat at Queen Jezebel's table. 
in verse 20, you can go to the next one. It says, so Ahab sent word to all the Israelites and assembled the pagan prophets together at Mount Carmel. Elisha approached all the people and said, how long will you hesitate between two opinions? It's how long will you, another version says, how long will you falter between two opinions? Or in, in the Amplified, but it didn't come out on this one, but it says, how long will you limp between two opinions? In America, and even in our lives, how long will we falter? How long are we going to go in between faith and unbelief, doubt and unbelief? How long? And this isn't a condemning word. God is saying, how long will you falter between two opinions? Either you believe me or you don't, right? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if he's Baal, follow him. But the people of Israel didn't answer him so much as a word. And then I jumped down to verse 24. And, uh, well, let me, hold on a second. Uh, first Kings 18. Hold on a second, you guys. Um, so where was that? 20. All right. And then, all right. So then Elisha said, uh, I'm alone. He said, you know, I'm, I'm the only prophet here. Sometimes we feel like we're the only ones crying out to God, but that's not true. But he said, uh, he asked, he, he said to them, look, just take two bulls. And, and cut them up and, and do your thing there. And he laid it, it says here, he cut the bulls in pieces and laid it on a wool, on the wood, and no fire was under it. And he said, I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood and no fire under it. In other words, he said, look, I'm going to get things in order. And, you know, wood represents our humanity. He's saying, listen, I'm going to lay things in order. And he's asking, God is asking us, we've got to get back to the foundations and lay things in order. And, and then it says in verse 24, then you call on the name of your gods and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God who answers by fire, he is God. So all the people answered and said, it's well spoken. Now I'm telling you in our own personal lives and in our nation, this is where we're at. God is saying to us, there's a war and you know, the Bible says there's no equal to our God. But God is saying to us, we're going to see a demonstration of the supernatural power of God. We're going to see whose God is going to win the God of this world or, or the God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And, and this is what's happening. The Jezebel spirit. And, and I'll explain a little bit about that. That's try to infiltrate the churches. Listen, the church has the answer to bring breakthrough because that's how this was designed. We have, you know, the, the people of God, not just certain people, we're all kings and priests in the kingdom of God. We all have that right and that authority to decree a thing that it shall be established unto us, the Bible says. And so the Lord is saying, how long will you falter between two opinions? How long are you going to be lukewarm in your walk with God? Either we're hot or we're cold. And, and you know what? It's always better to be hot for God because when you're lukewarm, you're frustrated. And so God is saying, check your hearts out. We all have to check our hearts. This isn't, I'm not, I'm not preaching at you. This is something the Lord's been speaking to me for a while about that we have got to consecrate ourselves in a way like never before. And I know a lot of you, I mean, I know we're prayer warriors. I know we're praying, but God is saying there's too much distraction. There's too much stuff that our eyes keep, you know, getting off track. All good things. But we have to consecrate ourselves in this season and, and a surrender for the fire of God, for the breakthrough of God, for the illumination of the spirit of the Lord upon us so that the world, when they look at us, they say, there is something there that I want. We were coming home last night. We got, we had a driver pick us up and I was really tired. Peter was tired. And a lot of times we, we minister to the people who pick us up and from this service, this car service. And I wasn't feeling so hot. And I thought, oh, I'm not talking to anybody. I just was sitting there quiet. Peter was talking to the guy. And all of a sudden, the, the guy starts talking about an issue he has with his phone. And as he started, the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and says, he's got a problem with pornography. And I'm like, oh, great. What am I going to do with that, Lord? You know, Lord, I don't even feel like talking. I'm going to say, by the way, brother, do you have a problem with pornography? You know, like, what? so I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, Lord, please, not tonight. So what happened, he's talking, and then the guy says, I'm a, I, you know, I don't know. I'm having a problem with my phone, and, and I'm, it's freezing, and blah, blah, blah. Peter said, turn it on, turn it off. Oh, you know, I'm like, ugh. So I'm just listening to them talk. And then he goes, I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I have a problem with pornography. Do you think that's the problem? Like, yes, that is the problem. <laughs> so, I mean, he just started, like, 
pouring his heart out from him just talking about his phone to I have a problem. We were able to pray with him and, and you know, uh, have him, you know, surrender his heart. But th see, this is what I'm saying. The world, they're crying out. And I said, Lord, how am I, I what are we going to talk about pornography? But see, God made a way. God made a way. The world wants what we have. But if we don't believe we have what we have, come on. So he's saying, how long will you falter between two opinions?